Hi everybody, it's Michael here with uh, part three of my three-part series on how to set up bed auto leveling on your Maker Farm 8-inch Prusa i3 RepRap 3D printer. In uh, part one, we covered uh, the assembly of some of the basic hardware, so the uh, servo mount, installing the servo, and also installing the um, uh, probe arm right here and the micro switch. We covered that in uh, part one. In part two, we talked a little bit about uh, getting your Marlin firmware set up uh, to get the um, uh, the servo functions active as well as the auto bed leveling functions themselves active. And in this uh, part right here, part three, we're going to put it all together. Uh, in part two, we did um, uh, basically fill in some dummy variables. We get, so there's some numbers that we need to get uh, in order to get this to work properly and that's what we're going to be primarily doing today. Now I've removed the fan uh, from my um, from my X carriage for clarity. Obviously you'd want to have your fan still on while you're um, uh, if you're going to be operating the printer. So we're not going to be doing any prints, but I wanted to be able to see that, so that's why that's removed. Uh, we're going to be uh, dealing with some commands in printer face as well as some of the hardware, and we'll get uh, right to that. So the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and set up the, uh, the proper angles for the um, uh, extension and the retraction of the Z-probe right here. And uh, we can do that. We can extend and retract the probe by using an M401 and M402 settings in uh, Pronterface. And I've gone ahead and just uh, set up a couple of buttons on my own Pronterface that has an extend and a retract button. Uh, what we're going to do, though, initially is uh, we have to figure out what that angle is going to be. And we're going to use that, or in order to do that, we're going to use the M280 command. So I'm going to type in an M280. And I'm going to select uh, index 0 for the servo, which is with P0. And then I'm going to use an S. And then I'm going to start off by setting this to 150 degrees. So what that does right there, that gives us, um, that tells us to set servo 0, which is the first uh, servo in, in sequence, to 150 degrees extension. And as we can see right there, that set it almost to parallel. Uh, what we're really looking for, and let me zoom this in just a little bit so you can see a little better is uh, we are looking for this surface down here at the bottom of the micro switch to be more or less parallel to the um, uh, to the surface of the print bed. And the reason we're doing that is we want to make sure, and this is also a reason why I don't like the micro switches with a big uh, metal shoe on them for this, we want that, that little trigger right there to be uh, meeting as uh, uh, close to perpendicular to the bed as possible. So we're doing our Z probing right there. So 150 degrees, and let's see, that looks like that's pretty good. Um, so in this case, I'll, I'll probably be setting it to somewhere pretty close to that. Just to give an example of what it would look like if it wasn't quite where it was supposed to be, I'll set it to 135 degrees. And obviously with that extension right there, what's gonna happen is the bottom of this is gonna plow into the heated bed. You may not ever even get this switch to connect and you're gonna have a runaway um, crash on your z-axis so that's what you want to watch out for so uh, but again we had that set to about 150 degrees and that looked like it was working pretty good there we go and I want to say mine's actually probably set for 155 let me see what happens when I do the extension yep just there's that little bit of difference okay so now um, so we're gonna set that aside that is in fact 155 degrees so we're gonna uh, write that down uh, as what we got here that gives us this angle right here now the next thing we want to do is figure out what our retraction angle is going to be. And uh, so I'm going to start off with guessing it to be about 80. And so I'm going to use the same command, M280, P0, uh, but I'm going to send 80. And that pops it up that way. Now, all we're really looking for here is to ensure that this is going to clear the fan and the hot end and everything else. Uh, we just, we're just trying to stow that out of the way. In fact, I think we can get a little bit higher on that too. So I'm going to go 70 and see how that is. There we go. That works nicely. Um, if you go too far, then the servo is not ever going to get there and it's going to you know, cause havoc. So you want something where it's out of the way, but it's not trying to go past the stop right here. So uh, yeah, so 70 looks like it's going to work pretty good in this example right here. So we'll uh, write down somewhere that the uh, extension setting is going to be 155 degrees and the retraction setting is going to be 70 degrees. Now, of course, your actual measurements may vary. This is just what I'm getting doing this today. Okay. Uh, so now, um, yeah, record those numbers because we're going to be putting them into our uh, configuration.h file in a little bit. Okay, now we've got our uh, servo angles set up. So now it's time to actually set up the offset between the probe and the hot end. And what I've done here is uh, simply made a mark with a marker uh, somewhere on my uh, heated bed. It doesn't actually matter where because all we're going to do is um, 
Uh, we're going to put the hot end on that uh, point, we're going to take a reading, and then we're going to put the probe on that point and take a reading, and it doesn't actually matter where it is. So uh, as I mentioned, the first thing we have to do now is, uh, once we've got that established, is I'm going to put the hot end uh, right on that dot. And so I'm going to do that by moving the uh, bed and the, um, and the hot end around using the controls on Pronterface. And I'm going to try and get that so that it is just as close as I can get it to right where that dot is using the, of course, X, Y, and Z. I want to be especially careful and kind of sneak up on it with the, um, with the Z because I don't want to have a hard crash right here. And what I want to do is be, right now I'm looking to be softly touching the, uh, the bed with the, with the hot end. And I'm going to just uh, make sure that I am actually just gently touching it with, by using the smallest of my, uh, feeler gauge that I have here. Okay, and I'm actually on, I think, a little bit harder than I want to be, so I'm going to lift that up just a little bit, just a tenth of a millimeter using uh, the Proner Face interface. And still not quite there. There we go. Okay, so now I am I'm able to get the smallest of, this, of these feeler gauges in between the, the bed and the point of the hot end. And so I think, okay, right there. That's, that's where I'm touching. Now, uh, and then I'm going to make sure that, I know I'm not quite lined up, but I think you see where I'm going. What I want is for the hot end, the point of the hot end, to be right on the mark that I made using the X, Y, and Z axes. Uh, so now, once I've done that, uh, I'm going to go over back over to my pronter face, and I'm going to set that position as uh, the zero point for all three axes. And I'm going to use that, or do that by using a G92, X zero, Y zero. Oops, I have too many. Uh, G ninety two, X zero, Y zero, Z zero, and that's going to set that spot right there where where, where I'm on the mark is going to be my new zero point. And now from there, what I'm going to do is go ahead and raise the uh, the hot end by a few millimeters at least because what I'm going to do now is extend the Z probe and now I'm going to use the uh, the controls on Proner face to put the foot the trigger of that probe right where I just had the hot end right on that dot and I'm going to lower it again on the Z axis very carefully And you're going to know that it has actually triggered when two things are going to happen. One, on your LCD, you're going to get a, uh, an indication that your uh, you're going to get the indication that the Z end stop has been triggered, and you can verify that on Proner Face with an M119, which will tell you the uh, position of uh, each of the end stops. And there, I see that it has triggered. So I might even be a little bit low. So I want to just be to where it triggers and then stop. Okay, and now once I've got that, uh, the end stop triggered and it's right on the same spot where the hot end just was, then what I'm gonna do is, uh, is use an M114 command, which is gonna tell me the values of the X, the Y, and the Z at the spot where it is right now. And what I see here on um, uh, as the response from the M114 is that I am uh, in X, I am minus 30. In Y, I am at uh, 2.0. And at Z, I am at 8.40. So now we have, uh, uh, we have now determined what our values are going to be. That is the offset. What we essentially determined is what the distance is in all three axes between the probe and the um, and the hot end. So again, I'm going to write those numbers down. Um, I have minus 30, uh, 2.0, and 8.40. And then we're going to put those into um, into our configuration.h file in just. Okay. So now that we've got our numbers, uh, then what we're going to do is go into our configuration.h file, uh, which we started to modify back in step two. And we're just going to plug in the uh, the numbers that we just generated uh, for our servos and also for our uh, hot end offsets. So we're going to go ahead and slide on down here. Let me maximize uh, the configuration.h file. 
and we are looking for uh, down here in the bottom. This is the RC servo support section, uh, which we will recall again from uh, from part two of the guide. And we're just going to go down here, and we're going to set the uh, end stop angles right here. So for the Z axis right here, we're going to put in our the numbers we generated, which happen to be 155 and uh, 70. Now let me once again emphasize: uh, do not simply go to your configuration.h and plug in the numbers that I have just generated. Uh, these are essentially dummy numbers, um, and I guarantee you they are not going to work on your printer if you just uh, plug these in without doing the measurements yourself. The point of this guide is so that you know how to actually find out what these values are going to be, uh, but there are so many little tiny variations between printers that you really do need to absolutely positively uh, generate all these numbers yourself. Uh, I'm simply showing you how to do that. Okay, so we've entered the uh, servo end stop angles, and this uh, should be, of course, um, as we would have done already, uh, these lines are going to be uncommented right here. So the defined uh, servo end stop angles, and we're going to insert the, um, uh, the extended value and the retracted value that we generated just a minute ago. Okay, now we're going to go insert the uh, um, the hot end offsets, which are going to be in the uh, bed auto leveling section right here. So again, we would have in uh, part two, we would have uncommented the uh, enable auto bed leveling uh, define right here, and we're going to go to the, right here to the um, uh, probe offsets from the extruders. Now, what we're going to do, and this is a little bit tricky, uh, we are going to reverse the sign on the numbers that we generated. So anything that we generated that's negative, we're going to turn into a positive and vice versa. So what we're going to do is uh, on the X offset from the extruder, uh, when I took that dummy set of measurements, and again, do not simply use the ones that I just did because they will not work. Um, what I came up with was minus 30.0, oops, actually that's already there, so 30.0, so I'm going to reverse the sign. It was minus 30.0, so now it's going to be 30.0 in the X direction. Uh, the Y offset from the extruder, I came up with a value of 2, so that's going to be, become minus 2, and I'll just put the point zero in just for uh, uh, the sake of keeping everything consistent. And then the Z value that I got was 8.4, so that's going to become minus 8.4. Okay, now we have um, we've plugged those values into the configuration.h, and uh, so now all I'm going to do is save the changes to this and uh, reflash this to my ramps board. Okay, now that we've got our uh, uh, firmware files all updated and flashed, uh, now it's time to uh, uh, put the rubber to the road, so to speak, and uh, find out exactly uh, whether or not we've done this right and we have successfully uh, created auto bed leveling. Uh, what I'm going to suggest, first of all, is um, we're going to want to home all the axes, but before we do anything, once you've got this firmware flashed, a very important thing to note uh, is you want to make sure that before you run any homing or auto-leveling operation, that you've got the uh, print head raised up enough that the servo arm has enough room to fully extend. If you have the print head set really low, or if, especially if you've got a really low profile um, uh, hot end on there, and this servo arm can't swing into position where the bed will touch the trigger on the micro switch, you are going to have a uh, runaway uh, Z axis and you're going to have a head crash. Uh, and that's not a good thing. So what I always do, just as a matter of habit, is go over to Proner Face and just bump up the um, oops, bump up the hot end a couple of tenths just to make sure that it is in fact uh, going to clear. Now once I've got that up and uh, where it needs to be, I'm going to use a G28 command and that's going to home all the axes. And if you've seen my previous videos, you know I prefer to have my, uh, my 00, 0 point be in that corner back there, uh, which uh, to me just leaves the bed accessible if I need to do anything there. Uh, okay, once we've got it homed, then uh, we're going to go ahead and, uh, let's see if I can focus that in a little bit there, there we go. Uh, now we're going to issue a G29 command, which is going to be the auto bed leveling uh, routine. And here we go. And 
And there it is. We have seen the uh, auto bed leveling code originally um, coded by Lars Brubaker and uh, ported to the Maker Farm i3 and inserted into the main branch of Marlin uh, by Alex Borrow. Great job, guys, and uh, great job to you guys for staying with me through this series, and I certainly hope this has been helpful for you. And if you have any comments or questions, I'm always happy to hear that. Uh, and until then, thanks very much for watching.